What is up? A tremendous Friday to you. Welcome to the jungle in Los Angeles. I am Jim Rome. Great to have you. Coming up at the bottom of hour number one, I'm going to go off the board and talk to a very good friend of mine. He is an author and a television host. His name is Richard Makowitz. Mac's got a great story. In Los Angeles, I am Jim Rome, and this is the Premier Radio Networks. Right now, as promised, we are joined by somebody who is actually a very, very good friend of mine. He's a 10-year vet of the Navy SEALs. During that time, he participated in numerous tactical operations with SEAL Team 1 and 2. He has over 20 years of experience in the martial arts. He has studied virtually every system there is. He's even trademarked and teaches his own system, which is called Bukido. I met him back in the year 2000 when I read his book. The book is called Unleash the Warrior Within. I thought the book was so good that I actually sought out the author. I wanted to meet him. I wanted to talk to him. Something I'd never done before. In the interim, he has blown up completely. He is now the host of his own television show. It's called Future Weapons. It airs on the Discovery Channel. In fact, season number two of that show is going to debut Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. My guest is Richard Makowitz. Mac, it is great to have you in the jungle. How are you? Uh, Brother, it is an absolute pleasure to be here. It's almost surreal. Mac, it is surreal. It's not almost surreal. It is surreal. (laughs) Let me first, let's talk about the program. You get to fly around the world testing the world's most exotic and cutting-edge weapons. Pretty freaking cool gig. Tell me about it. It is, it is actually the perfect boy job ever. I get to go around the world shooting big guns, flying an incredible aircraft, and blowing things up. What kid would not love to do that job? <laughs> hey, Mac, tell me about it. I mean, you left the SEALs back in 1995. How much has technological warfare advanced since then, and how blown away are you by the weaponry that you get to test? It is incredible to see how far science and technology has pushed this stuff. And I feel so lucky because we get the chance to see an inside world, an access, if you will, to a world that most people never even get a chance to see. And to see how this technology is going to make a difference for the soldier, sailor, airman, marine that's on the field doing the dirty and dangerous work, it's just a real privilege to be able to check that stuff out. Matt, give me an idea. So for the season debut, like, what kind of weapons are we talking about? Oh, we're talking about shooting a 50 caliber sniper rifle that's made for just SEAL Team. It's called the AS-50. There's also an aardvark where I, it actually chews up landmines, and I get to go over an anti-tank mine in this thing and just watch it chew it up. It's crazy. Hey, listen, what about the military, though, Mac? I mean, obviously a lot of it is confidential. W- what is it that they allow you to see as opposed to what you can't see, and how do they approach that? I think, I think what they're trying to do is give us access without compromising any of the tactical advantages they need on the battlefield. And I also think when you're talking about just the, the nature of the war as it is, it's nice to have information about what's coming to the troops in the future. And when you start to see this stuff, it's, it's really interesting to see how it's going to make a difference strategically, how it's going to save their lives. Like when you're talking about dragon skin body armor, how those kind of new body armors, that kind of new technology is actually going to be really good for the warfighter in the field. Now, this television show is called Future Weapons. It airs on the Discovery Channel. It's going to debut its second season Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Mac, I want you to take a step back, and I want to talk about your career, and I want to talk about your approach Tell me about BUDS. I mean, what is BUDS? And when you got into the Navy SEALs, how many started in that class and how many made it through? Uh, when, I, when I went through BUDS, BUDS is Basic Underwater Demolition SEAL Training. It is considered by many to be the toughest training, uh, at least to, to introduction to go into the military or into a special operations community. And BUDS is an opportunity where you go six months and they just push you to the limit on everything. I had 140 people start in my class, and we had 27 finish. They, they freeze you. They burn you up. They, they, they push you to see what kind of man is going to show up under stress and pressure. And the only two things they care about is can you put all your personality stuff aside long enough for the betterment of the team and when everything goes bad and when everything is 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 horrible will you show up for that team mac if 140 of the best started and only 27 finished what separated the 27 from the others uh, i 
it's really a refusal to quit. I, I kind of have this whole thing called not dead, can't quit. It's that no matter what, no matter what, you stay in the game, you keep showing up, no matter how cold it gets, no matter how miserable it gets, no matter how bad the situation is, you keep showing up. And listen, there's a lot of smart guys that qualify for this stuff, too. So it's really about getting the best guys through this program and then getting them into a team and giving them the real uh, the knowledge as far as the advanced warfare, the best weapons, the best tactics, the best training. You know, you can, it's an affirmation. You can, I've heard you say that. I've heard others say it. Not dead, can't quit. Not dead, can't quit. But you don't get through something like that unless you want it badly. You don't get through something like that unless you're on some sort of mission. What was your mission, and how did you get through it? I think, really, I, wanted, I was out to prove myself, and I was willing to put my life on the line to do it. I wanted to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I could show up under the worst imaginable conditions and that I could be a man. I wanted to be a man. I wanted to know that when my family needed me, my friends needed me, when my teammates needed me, I could be the guy you could count on. And that's, that's really was the central focus. And, and then all the benefits of really knowing that you're going to be working with the best guys, learning the best stuff, uh, playing with the best weapons. That, that was all there at the forefront. And then I wanted to be able to take that knowledge and skill and use it to help other people. And that's how Unleash the Warrior Within and Bukito got started. Richard Mackowitz joining us on the program. What about Bukito? How does martial arts fit into this whole thing? How'd you get involved in that? Well, what, what I discovered is really under stress and pressure of an attack, uh, you, it can get, you know, listen, things can get really confusing. Stress and pressure, fear, the unknown, all that stuff can show up almost instantaneously. And I wanted to teach people how to be able to move through that. So I, so I figured if I could teach you to handle the, metaf the metaphor, if you will, of unarmed combat, to handle saving your life under stress and pressure, using that same mental process to accomplish what you want on a day-to-day -day basis would be very beneficial. And out of that came Unleash the Warrior Within. Richard Mackowitz joining me on the program. Mac, what was Hell Week like? Tell me about Hell Week. <laughs> what I remember of Hell Week. Now, right. listen, it's, it's, it's really, it's a, it, it is about, they, they start off, it's a Sunday, and it just starts off with a bang. They're, everybody's screaming, everything's yelling, everything's there. And then it's really about getting you cold, wet, and miserable, and keeping you that way for, for a for six days straight, no sleep, no, uh, you just never, ever stop. And it's, you have to do certain exercise, you have to work together as a team, you have to be able to put your personal stuff aside. And I'll tell you, when you're under that kind of stress and that kind of pressure, your, your doubt, your second guessing, that hesitation, that, 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 that little voice in your head that says, I can't go one step further, you've got to learn how to manage that to be able to be successful and make it through that moment. Yeah, but Mac, what about that little voice? I mean, if somebody's listening right now and they're thinking, I don't really like the way I feel. I don't really like the way that I see things. I don't really like that dialogue that's always going on in my head. I feel like I'm a little soft. I want to be that warrior, but I'm just not wired for it. What do you tell that person? Well, first of all, every single one of us has the capability to accomplish anything we want to accomplish. I firmly believe that. I, I, you know, I, I was a, a guy that uh, my teacher once told my or one of my teachers told my mom, this guy will never amount to anything. He's, you know, and I, I, I really feel that you, every single one of us has that. It's really focusing on the voice or directing that voice toward the thing that you have to get done in that moment and not fixating on the voice that's pulling you away about what you can't do, how small you are, how weak you are, how incapable or how bad the world is. Those voices are the ones that are pulling you away. You need to keep directing the voice that keeps you on the thing that matters in that moment, and you'll be amazed how much you get done. Richard Mackowitz joining me on the program. You know, Mac, I go back a few years, and again, I, you and I met in the year 2000 after I read the book, and like a lot of people here in Los Angeles, you had a dream, you had a plan, you started to work your plan, and these things take time. They don't happen overnight. There's a lot of people in this town that want to make it, and they want to hit big. And I remember you and I were talking about this one day, and you were getting pretty amped up, pretty fired up, kind of like you are in this conversation. And you finally looked at me, and you just you had this scowl, and you said, <laughs> "I'd rather be shot in the face than not make it." And you know, I think ordinarily, I know you a little bit. Somebody might be like, "Whoa, dude, this cat is crazy." But I mean, did you feel it that deeply? The only thing crazier than you telling me I'd rather be shot in the face than not make it is I believed you. You know what? I, I feel like that. And the fact of the matter is. Guess what? Every single day, and this is a hard thing for people to get, you're dying. So why not use your life? Why not put everything on, your, on the line to be the best father you can be, the best husband, the best business person you can be? Why not put everything that you've got into the thing you're doing? Because you're going to die anyway, so why not bring every bit of your life into the thing that you want most? And I've used that approach, and it's worked pretty well for me so far.